Lady here and today I'm going to be teaching you how to get kittens not to bite you. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, how do you get a kitten not to chomp down on your hands and feet? I get it, when you're working with kittens, sometimes you feel like a human chew toy. Their teeth are so prickly and sharp and they do have an instinct to bite. So when I'm asked this question, my answer is always the same. Biting is a perfectly normal behavior for kittens, but there are things you can do to get them not to bite you. So before we begin, it's important to know that cats are a predator species. So if you're raising a kitten, you're literally raising a micropanther. These guys have a biological instinct to stalk, hunt, and kill their prey, just like a lion or a tiger does. If we love cats, we have to love them fully, not just when they're sleepy and cuddly, but also when they're ferocious and playful. These are the behavioral characteristics that make them who they really are. Your kitten might be raised indoors and have all of their needs met, like shelter and food. But we have to remember that they have evolved for thousands of years to have certain behavioral and biological needs that help them to survive. One important psychological need they've evolved to have is the thrill of stalking, pouncing, and biting their prey. Just because you fulfill a kitten's physical needs does not mean that you're meeting all of her psychological and emotional needs. And of course, just like humans, they have to have more than just food and water and a place to go to the bathroom to be happy. To be psychologically whole, they have to experience the hunt, which does include biting. So how can we simulate hunting in our homes without becoming a target of their tiny teeth? Here are six tips. My first piece of advice is to make your toys move. I want you to picture a lion on the savanna. At first, the lion is at rest. There's nothing but stillness. Suddenly, in the distance, movement. What happens when the lion sees movement? She might crouch down really low. Her eyes will dilate. Maybe she'll even wiggle her butt. Her adrenaline is pumping. And when the moment is right, she pounces. This cat is feeling psychologically whole. Now I want you to picture a kitten in your home. The kitten is at rest. Maybe nothing's been happening all day. Suddenly, you walk into the room and as your foot goes past that kitten, they're thinking, attack! This is because the only thing they've seen move all day is you. So you become a target of their bite. Makes sense. Stalking and biting a moving target is the pinnacle of happiness for a cat, especially for a kitten who's just starting to make those connections. In both scenarios, first there is stillness and then there is movement. This right here is really the key to getting kittens not to bite you. We have to be getting them into a healthy hunting rhythm. We have to be playing with our kittens actively multiple times a day with toys that move. If you just throw a bunch of toys into a room and expect the kitten to be satisfied, that's just not going to work. Because if we never make toys move for them, then the only thing they ever see moving is your hands and feet. So starting around four weeks, kittens are really developing a strong desire for this kind of activity. They have strong eyesight, they're able to track objects visually in space, and their coordination has improved enough that they can start gently batting at objects. If you're not sure how old your kitten is, you can watch my video all about kitten age and development. By starting kittens off with playing at a young age, we help them associate biting with toys so that they don't see your hands and feet as a prey object. My second piece of advice is don't play with your hands. It's also important that we're not encouraging kittens to view our hands as prey. I know how tempting it is to twinkle your fingers at them or tickle their bellies, but this does teach them to view your hands as a chew toy. Take my word for it, do not do this. It's a lot less cute when the kitten grows into a full-grown cat who bites, and cats who bite may not have a good experience in their adopter's home. So we don't wanna be encouraging this behavior that might make them less adaptable. Third piece of advice is to redirect any biting to an appropriate target. It's important that anytime you give a kitten a no, you give them an equal and more attractive yes. For instance, you can't just say to a kitten, don't bite anything, that's madness. They're a kitten, they're going to bite. Instead of saying don't bite, you should be saying do bite, but bite this instead. If a kitten's biting your hands, you never want to punish or scold them. They don't understand what that means. Instead, if a kitten is biting you, just make your hand limp, move it a 
away and show them something that is much more interesting to bite on. Just move the toy around and always redirect their biting behaviors towards an appropriate target. Try playing with the kitten with a variety of different objects and redirecting their behavior towards things that move differently. Maybe your kitten wants a kicker toy that they can bunny kick with their back feet. Or maybe they want a crinkly toy that makes a lot of noise. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they want a wand toy that flies through the air like a bird. There's so many different types of toys that you can use with your kitten and they all move slightly differently. You also don't have to break the bank to provide them with this enrichment. You can even make cat toys at home for free with stuff that you already have. Just remember the key is actively playing with them with toys that move. My next piece of advice is don't be a tease. Woo! It's important not to tease or taunt your kittens with toys. Giving them a little bit of a challenge is nice, but if you never let them actually catch it, then they don't get the satisfaction of the kill. And that's not a psychologically fulfilling experience for anyone. Instead, woo! Instead, you wanna give them a little bit of a challenge and then let them catch the toy. Good job, Kabu, you are such a mighty beast. Oh, you're a mighty beast too. Good job. You guys are truly terrifying. This also applies to laser pointers, which of course you and I know a cat actually can't catch. But for them, that's a very frustrating experience. So if you do play with them with a laser pointer, make sure that you're giving them a kicker toy or something to enjoy afterwards to satiate the feeling of having hunted. My fifth piece of advice is to give them a hunter's rhythm. In his book, Total Cat Mojo, my friend Jackson Galaxy talks about the natural rhythm of a happy cat. And that is to hunt, catch, kill, eat, groom, sleep. And so even with our young kittens, we wanna get them in this rhythm. I recommend always following up your playtime with a meal. So I like to give my kittens the thrill of the hunt, let them catch the toy and really kick it, bite it and show it who's boss. Then after a good play session, I feed them. This is like the reward for being a good hunter. They feel so satisfied and proud. Then they can groom themselves, go to sleep, and wait for the next moment of excitement when the hunt begins again. So after you play with your kittens, I recommend following up with a satisfying treat. So make sure that when you're playing with your kittens, you're doing so in a way that really gets them into that healthy rhythm of a happy cat. First they'll be at rest, then they stalk their prey, they hunt, then they catch their prey, and they kill it by bunny kicking it and biting it, then they get the satisfaction of eating, grooming, and going back to sleep. My final piece of advice for getting kittens not to bite you is to raise them with a friend. Having one kitten is really like having half a kitten. Having two kittens is like having a whole. Having a buddy gives them someone who they can really exercise all of those playful behaviors with. They can take their energy out on each other, they can teach each other new skills, and they even do a great job of teaching each other boundaries by yelping out when they are biting too hard. I can't overstress how important it is to get a friend for your kitten, especially if they are taking out a lot of their energy on you. That's why you so often see me adopting out kittens in pairs and introducing felines to each other so that they can be best friends. I hope this video is helpful for you. We have to remember that kittens and cats are more than just cuddly companions. They're also a predator species with their own psychological and emotional needs, and it's our duty to help fulfill them. By fulfilling their need to bite and pounce and play, we can bring more harmony into the life of the cat and into our own homes. Good luck, and here's to your bite-free future. Bye-bye! <laughs>